Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the bomber number LB4310C-350R-643. This will prove to be a little unco less common hinge. This will be prove to be an unusual hinge. By all means, it looks like a pretty standard hinge, and it is. It's a 3.5 inch by 3.5 inch spring uh, hinge. Um, that is in what we call a 643 finish, also known as US 11, plain language called out as antique bronze lacquered. So it's an antique bronze. Uh, you can do, in the bronze family, you can do 639 uh, satin bronze. I want to pull up my chart here to be sure that I get it correct. Uh, because I'm not recalling what polished bronze is. Um, the common bronze finishes is, is the point of what I'm driving at here. I want to be able to give you those. Uh, typing is not my strong suit. So 643 is the finish we're looking at here. That, that means a couple of things. That code itself means it's made of steel, okay? that it is in an antique bronze that has a lacquer over it. You can do the far more common 640 finish, which would be oil rubbed bronze. You can do the 639 satin bronze. Uh, you can also do Let's take a look. A polished bronze, and that would be a 611 finish. But there's not going to be a polished bronze on steel uh, because, you know, uh, it's really not steel. It's not bronze, but it can be emulated. They can do a plating of bright bronze, uh, which would be a 637 finish. And that's what I was looking for, 637. I'm looking at my chart up here. So lots of options in the bronze family. Antique with a lacquer, oil rubbed, satin, polished. Uh, you know, that's generally what we're dealing with. Uh, this definitely may pass for antique brass, but antique brass uh, is going to prove to be a little bit uh, darker than this, with more tones of gold or brass coming through rather than the attempt of bronze colors coming through here and here. Okay, so a really nice finish. It's elegant, it's classic, it's timeless in my opinion. I think it will go, you know, continue to ebb. Uh, in and out of popularity as the decades tick by. But a really nice looking hinge. So, why is this unusual? Well, it's a 350R. It's a reverse spring hinge. Uh, spring hinges are meant to, of course, when you open the door, to close them. This hinge does the opposite. When you open the, when you open the, when you close the door and unlatch it, it's meant to open the door and keep it in the open position until you close it. Where would you use such an animal? It's very commonly used in applications and commercial applications where they want the office doors to be held in the open position. And yeah, sure, they can close them for privacy, but when you unlatch that, the door will normally be in the open position. And that would be typical and common for that. Not in a, a partial position, not you know slightly ajar, but simply open for whatever the reason might be. I see spring hinges uh, sold, requested in car dealerships, in those individual offices where the deals are cut, um, and that would be where I'd see those. But I can imagine lots of uh, lots of scenarios where you, doors were meant to be open in these applications. You know, open consultations with with people. Um, it could be appropriate to have a. I would think a school counselor where their door is always open. Hey, my door is always open uh, until it's time for privacy. You know, whatever the case might be. This could this client. You know, a residential client, who knows? They might just want a particular door normally open so their dog can come and go, you know, that sort of application. And while it's not an inexpensive way to accomplish that, it's an elegant way to, to accomplish it. And the way that that works is this hinge is going to come with a tension collar here. You'll notice there's not one here. Normally, when you install these with the tension collar pointed towards the top of the door, you would insert that tension rod and you would rotate it clockwise to increase tension. But with a reverse, you're gonna go counterclockwise. And as I do, I reveal a new hole that's here. And into that new hole, I will drop the tension pin. And that will set tension so that the hinge will have tension keeping it closed like this. So 
when you're installing it, you won't have any tension set because you need the leaves to be open to get everything installed uh, on the door and frame, get, get, getting the door hung. But after installation, insert the tension rod, go counterclockwise, drop in a pin. If you're going to just 90 degree, don't exceed four holes. If you're going to 180 degree, don't exceed three holes. General rule of thumb with this. Uh, this is an LB4310C. Putting all of that together tells me that it's a three knuckle hinge, that it is a lube bearing. That's just the construction of these pieces that you see here. Very friction, uh, very low friction coefficient. Tells me that it is a full mortise hinge. The swag on the hinge leaves here, when they're brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. Tells me that it is a uh, standard template pattern for a three and a half inch hinge in relationship to where the screw holes are. Okay, um, that's going to be a standard pattern, uh, and that's buried in the uh, the ten part of the part number LB4310. The C tells me that this is a commercial grade hinge. You can do spring hinges in residential or commercial grade, about 96 thousandths or about 123 thousandths. This leaf thickness is 134 thousandths. So maybe not 123, maybe this is supposed to be 130. But my caliper is telling me it's 0.134, and I'm looking at the extended description. It's not 123, it's 130 thousandths is what it's supposed to be. So that's the C in the part number. The 350 means it's three and a half inch tall and three and a half inch wide. Okay. As you change that part of the part number, the size will change. 350-400 for 4x4, 450 for 4.5x4.5, 454 for 4.5x4. That can be done as well as a spring hinge. Um, the R means reverse. You put an R on there, that tells them to assemble this hinge so that the uh, reverse sort of behavior occurs on the spring. And then the finish, 643. Suffice it to say, you'll be able to do this hinge on lots, uh, pardon me, you'll be able to do this hinge in lots of different finishes. Bomber has their own plating plant, as does every manufacturer, uh, you know, who, who makes finished hardware. Bomber has a, a building, a structure, where people drive to just to work on the plating and finishing process. Bomber can produce well over 30 finishes on, bowl, on different base materials, steel, brass, bronze, stainless, whatever it is. Uh, and a fun fact about their plating factory, which I've visited, I've had a uh, exceptionally uh, detailed, handheld uh, tour by the manager of the plant, who was exceptionally gracious to, you know, allow me to learn as much as possible about the plating process. And I walked away with a very realigned understanding of just how difficult it is to make plated goods. Uh, finished goods, um, but in that facility they produce those 30 plus finishes and they do so in such a way where their net impact on the environment is, is to say zero is incorrect. Their waste, what they expel from the plating plant, is cleaner than all of the water around them, including what the local municipality produces, which is of course perfectly clean and healthy. It's a fact that Bomber is quite proud of. Uh, so again, where you're going to use this hinge, you know, uh, in, it's a three and a half inch hinge, uh, inch and three eighths is where you're going to see uh, the door thickness for a three and a half inch. Could you install it on a, lar a thicker door? Sure you could. But if you have an inch and three quarter door, if you found three and a half inch hinges on there, that's a mistake. That shouldn't be that way. But if you're installing this and this client ordered one, you're going to need to install this with other C or contract grade hinges from someone because the thinner hinge leaf, the vertical axis of pivoting is not going to be compatible for that door to open correctly. So be mindful. If you're ordering one, you need to have the thickness within a particular range and that residential 96 thousandths, that's not going to work really well with this. When you install this, and this client literally ordered one, this you'll want this to be in the middle or bottom location. Uh, absolutely. The top location is reserved for your full mortise ball bearing hinge. Um, middle would probably work. You might find a little different behavior on the bottom hinge location. I don't expect that you'll determine too much uh, difference in that regard, but never at the top is the moral of this story. This, uh, back to the finishes, that can, this can be done in countless uh, finishes up to that 30 plus that they can do. For every order that you place, you'll get at least one tension rod. You're going to need that to turn the tension collar. For every hinge that you order, you'll get one tension pin. 
Okay, you're going to want to use this tension pin. Uh, and these holes in the tension collar are crossboard, and you're wanna, going to want to get that completely seated into the opening. You do not want it projecting any further than necessary. Um, that would be considered not best practice. Uh, so get that as seated as possible. You don't want it projecting off. Uh, now this uh, hinge has included all machine screws. I can only think that the client specified all machine screws because that's what's included with this particular order. Okay, be mindful. Indicate at the time of order what type of screws you want, or indicate at the time of order what is the composition of your door and frame. It, you know, if this client had a wood door or a wood frame or both, these screws are not going to work. So be mindful to specify that so that there's no confusion about what is really necessary for you to get the job done. Finding wood screws that will probably be a number 10 by inch and a quarter in a 643 or antique bronze with a lacquer applied compatible finish yeah, you're not going to find that at the local home improvement store uh, let's switch to the screen view and take a closer look at some supporting documentation okay so this is indeed the item that we are looking at here reverse action down below in the extended description they're going to talk about everything that we've already talked about except for the following um, this is not ul listed uh, at all for fire door. It says you all listed here because we're really not on the reverse page. You would not absolutely be using this on a fire door for a couple of reasons. It doesn't close the door. It opens it in fact. That's a violation of one of the three tenants of a fire door. Um, and it's inch and three, it, it's, it's three and a half inch. Uh, so, you know, there is no UL stamping on this whatsoever. Um, you know, so non-fire rated applications only. Grade one, this means that this hinge has been tested to a million cycles, or its build has been. And I did ask the engineer one time, jokingly at Bomber, you know, how many, you know, I know it's grade one, it's a million cycles. How many cycles did <laughs> did the hinge pass to? He says, I don't know, I unplugged the machine at seven million cycles. So Bomber is exceedingly and rightfully so proud of their hinge uh, line when it comes to their single acting spring hinges. Everything they do, no doubt. But their single acting spring hinges Bomber will argue, as I'm sure others, but Bomber will argue successfully that they have the the highest caliber spring hinge on the market uh, because of the engineering and design of the quite proprietary spring that's inside of the mechanism. Um, nobody brings to the game what Bomber does, in my opinion, on spring hinges. Not only in caliber, but in diversity of product, availability of product. Pivot point aligns with commercial hinges 123 to 134, so be sure that you're mixing and matching correctly. There is uh, a lot of language here as it pertains to door uh, size when it comes to fire rating. Um, doesn't apply to this. They're not going to want you to exceed a 3 foot by 7 foot door, and if you're dealing with 70, uh, 70 pound doors, two spring hinges and one butt hinge, 90 pound doors, three spring hinges. This client ordered one, so they probably have a hollow core, you know, uh, bedroom door, that kind of scenario. You can order the replacement tension pin here and the rod here. People do have a tendency to call and need to order those because they need them. They've lost them. They removed the pin. Uh, now they want to reactivate the self-closing feature. They need, they need the pin. The template is here, and that's handy because it will allow you to review the dimensional properties of everything germane to the hinge itself, uh, not only the uh, height and width of the hinge, but the location of the holes. Okay. There is installation instructions. Now this will apply to a standard spring hinge. You need to reverse this when you're doing a reverse hinge. Tension collar, tension rod, you're going to go counterclockwise and then follow the rest of the steps here. It's very simple. Just don't exceed the holes that they're mentioning here. If you hear creaking in the spring hinge, and you know, I've had people uh, call and say, yeah, I heard that spring hinge, it was creaking, and then I heard a loud snap. I says, well, how many holes of tension did you put on there? I don't know, seven or eight? What was the degree of opening? Oh yeah, no, 100, I could go all the way back against the wall. Yeah, that's that's why it broke. <laughs> you don't need, you don't need a, you know, you don't need a different spring hinge. You just need more spring hinges uh, to close that door. And I'm not a fan of spring hinges at all. I think they're awful in the sense of reliably and predictably and elegantly closing the door. I think hydraulic control is superior 
but not every application, like a bedroom door, uh, you know, is appropriate for a for a large hydraulic spring body on top of your on top of your door. So you can read through these uh, installation instructions, um, simple and straightforward. Just again, counterclockwise. There's also a link to the certifications and hinge selection guide. The important part down here is what we just discussed, how many spring hinges, depending on the weight, depending on the size. Okay, And again, don't mix and match your leaf thicknesses. If you have a caliper, you can easily measure how thick the existing hinges are. They talk about labeled doors here. Again, this doesn't apply because this is a non-labeled hinge. Uh, it's not labeled, it's not listed in a reverse application. You will not see the stamping on it at all. Uh, and do not install this as a regular hinge. Uh, the way that the hinge is constructed, the spring itself is not meant to be uh, applying uh, closing force when you use a reverse in a standard application. Um, now what's interesting also about this is I've had people uh, you know, call up and say, yeah, I ordered a spring hinge, but it doesn't work right. Uh, you know, they've got a jam and they have their their door, you know, just on the, just on, you know, on the hinge jam only. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work right. You know, it's supposed to close the door. You know, I open it up and, you know, it works for a while and then it breaks. And we talk more about it and more about it. And it turns out that they're surface mounting the hinge. Okay. And when they set tension on that, you know, they're turning it backwards so that they can open it and then get it to close. This hinge is literally meant to be installed here. Okay. Now, if you're going to full surface mount it here, you can do that. But you need to order a reverse spring so that, you know, it will compress as you go to close it and then release as you go, uh, as you go to open it, compress the spring or, or, or increase tension on the spring and then allow that to release as, as the door closes. So uh, very common that people will say, yeah, that spring doesn't work. It worked for a while and it stopped. Well, how are you installing it? Well, I'm just surface mounting it onto the door and frame. Bam, that's the problem. It's not meant for a surface mount. It's meant for a full mortise. If you do a reverse, then you can do this. And that would be the other reason uh, to use a reverse spring hinge when you are surface mounting. So not only when you're going to mor full mortise it and then intend the door to open, you can intend the door to be closed if you're surface mounting it. I've had people order hinges and, and conclude that the bomber hinge is incorrect. It's the application. So once we determine that, we're able to get them the correct product. And I run into this um, relatively often, actually. Grade one, you know, a million cycles. They're, you know, they should have a, they should have a grade, they should have a grade above that for like five or 10 million cycles. Bomber would hit most of those requirements, I'm quite sure of it. Now, below this video here, um, let's see here now, just making sure I don't forget anything to bring to your attention. Again, in the comment field, that's where you would want to list what screws that you require here. But there's a link here below this video to the manufacturer's page. And when we click on that, we're going to get that page to open up from where you can uh, review not only all of the bomber products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation here, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as link to the full product catalog. Now, suffice it to say, in the in the world of bomber, they are the leader, T H E, the leader when it comes to spring assisted hinges, double and single acting, obviously. Uh, their most common hinge is going to be the 3029 series where if you've ever been in a restaurant between the kitchen and the seating area and there's a double acting door, it could be a Bomber 3029. And if it's not, it's a copy or a clone of it. The Brothers Bomber and started Bomber in 1876 or thereabouts and uh, invented the entire catalog and category of spring hinges. I would very much recommend that you review their catalog. They have a very hinge-centric product offering and they do it well, very, very well. They have so many Ted Williams on their team, it's incredible. Uh, meaning they have so many people that are batting so high in their you know, lifetime 
average. You know, their engineering department is irreplaceable. Their customer service department, you know, irreplaceable. Their shipping department, you know, it's phenomenal. It's, it's just a great confluence of everything going right at a company. Uh, so scrolling through here will, will really be uh, a way to edify yourself when it comes to the understanding of how hinges work. Spring hinges are in here as well, a variety of different types for standard and uh, speci residential specific applications, meaning different manufacturers, such as Permador, Johnson, Pease, Peachtree, Acorn, Castlegate, Johnson Integrity, Stanley, General, Taylor. Uh, Thermatrue is not listed here. Thermatrue is an unusual hinge, and I will be reaching out to the manufacturer and asking about that, because they have an unusual hinge. I believe the answer will be they don't have enough demand to actually make that hinge because it is an unusual hinge to begin with. All right, let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, a very common question that I get when it comes to uh, spring hinges, how many should I order? Well, um, no more than you need, but there sometimes is an advantage to having a little more than you need when there is an environmental uh, condition that will make the spring hinges less efficient like you know pressure building pressure you know if someone has you know um, a ill-fitting door in a frame and you're going to need to get that latched a little bit faster uh, to get it to close and latch yeah maybe more spring power on reserve you know uh, maybe using all three spring hinges uh, is a when you have a standard door you know, standard metal clad, you know, wood door, residential door. It's a lube, it's an LB hinge, a lube bearing hinge from Stan, from a Bomber, so it's going to have the ability of being able to give you really great volume uh, in terms of usage without wear. Um, but you're going to find in the summer with the windows open, it takes less spring power to close that door generally. In the winter, it can sometimes seem like it takes more spring power. Having more spring hinges rather than less spring hinges give you more ability to have more stored energy as the door goes into the opening cycle, or in this case, the closing cycle. Um, so you might like the ability to uh, tailor that. Every door, if it's solid core, should have two spring hinges for sure. And even hollow core doors, because, you know, what do you have in a, a three foot by six foot eight door? Well, you've got about 20 square feet, okay? You know, three by three times seven, basically, you know. Uh, you've got about 20 square feet, so as that door closes, you don't have a lot of mass in the door. Therefore, it's not generating a lot of inertia, and it, but it's moving a huge surface area of air as you push that door closed. You take, you take a door and try to forcefully open or close it, uh, you're going to feel the resistance of the invisible. And that spring hinge is fighting that all the way, so, you know, in that area. And perhaps to illustrate that point a little bit clearer, I liken the quantity of spring hinges to a tugboat. They don't go very fast, but they can pull a lot of weight. Um, you know, residual stored energy by having more springs rather than less may be an advantage. Um, if you find that the performance of the door isn't controllable for as much as a spring is controllable over a period of a year, add another spring hinge. If it's too controllable, back off the tension on one of them. And if you go with three spring hinges when you need three, uh, put that spring hinge at the top position last. You know, middle, bottom, then top. Uh, really doors that are heavier or taller, you know, spring hinges aren't really a great idea for that because you need to increase tension, 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 release. And sometimes you have to get that so much stored energy that the door has to slam closed. That's not good for the door, the frame, the wall. Um, the environment that you're living in with the sound of it, you know, hydraulic control, surface closers, overhead concealed, floor closers, all superior because uh, you can control it. It's still a spring, but when that spring is allowed to uh, decompress, that rate is controlled by the movement of fluid through raceways, um, allowing you to close those, that valve and open that valve up to control the, flow, the rate of flow. Um, so be mindful that a closer might be a better option. But inch and three-eighths thickness doors, I'm thinking, yeah, there's no closer involved here. Uh, I am hyper uh, partial to Bomber. Hopefully that came through. There's the Bomber logo right above it, made in the USA. That's a fact that Bomber is incredibly proud of, as am I to represent them. There are logos from other manufacturers that certainly say 
USA on it. It'll say company and then USA. Does not mean it's made in the United States. However, with Bomber, it absolutely means it's made in the United States. It says made in USA. Um, you know, that may or may not mean anything to you. Uh, and it, it, right now is the year 2020. It means more to people than it has, I think, at this time in a long time. And um, proceed uh, as you see. And I thought uh, that that knowledge uh, would be something of interest to you one way or another. Any questions on the LB4310C and a 350R and a 643? or any other bomber product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.